Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. So tonight we're gonna to be talking about eight different bourbons that you need to stop sleeping on. Now, what does it take to make this list? Well, first criteria is that it has to be fairly available. Second, it has to be fairly decent price. Obviously your location is gonna be a little bit different and availability varies state to state, but the whole point of this list is these are eight things, not generally allocated or limited in any way. So right now across the country, there are some shortages, there's strikes, there's bottle issues, and some of these things are starting to affect deliveries. Like here in Virginia, some of the truck deliveries aren't happening. Some of the stuff that we could normally get, like Blanton's and Eagle Rare and Buffalo Trace and, and some of those other things that we normally get like once a month, they didn't come last month and we don't know when we'll see them again. So what are some things that we need to stop sleeping on? These are good bourbons, they're good prices, it's good values, they're not expensive. And so that's what we're gonna to talk to tonight. So let's dive right into it. Now, first off tonight, we're gonna to be talking about Larceny Small Batch. Now this is a 92 proof weeded bourbon. It's a great option for those that are wanting to explore weeded bourbons. It's a great entry point there at price point that it comes in at. It has a nice proof at 92. It's not coming in too hot. You can get the Larceny Barrel Proofs that are gonna be pushing the 120s. Uh, proof wise and that's a great you know barrel proof option as well but those tend to be a little bit harder to find and you, that's not what this show is about today now this has this kind of really really nice vanilla on the nose it's not super strong but it's just it's very faint but it's very pleasant it's you mix that with some of the floral notes that you get so on the palate it has this like nice honey with almost a little bit of a syrup to it it's very faint there's a nice kind of vanilla uh, above that it's got a little bit of an herbalness and then it's got a, a fairly strong cinnamon note so if you're sensitive to the cinnamon flavors and bourbons then this may not be for you to me it's not a cinnamon bomb but it does tend to be you know it has a little bit of that cinnamon now regardless of price regardless of value and all those other things you know, on a flavor scale of, of like one to five, I would give this like three and a half stars. To me, it's it's quite good for what it is. To get a 92 proof weeded bourbon with this consistency and this flavor profile for the price that you can get it at, it's a great value. You should try to pick one up. Next up tonight, we have Evan Williams Single Barrel. Now, some of you may be, you know, Evan Williams White Label fans, and don't get me wrong, it's a Evan Williams White Label is a is a great bottle and a great price. It's one of my go-to mixers and 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 very much a, a favorite bourbon of mine. However, to step up in price to get to the Evan Williams Single Barrel, and this is a tremendous sipping bourbon. For those of you who have never had it, let's, let's open it up and smell it and taste it. On the nose, I'm getting a little bit of a hay, not strong or off-putting. Then getting a hint of maple syrup, some butterscotch, a nice herbal presence, hitch of clove, just ever so ever so faint there. It has a tremendous mouth coat for the price point you're talking about, just this great bourbon feel. The proof isn't too high, coming into 86 proof, so it doesn't burn, but you still get like a nice mouth tingle for an 86 proof bourbon. That's actually fairly exceptional. So with that nice maple syrup sweetness, then with the, the peanut kind of peanut on top of that, and then the raspberry, I thought it's really kind of like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's just really, really good. Now this particular bottle uh, happens to be exactly eight years old. So to get a bourbon at this price point, that's eight years, age stated with this tremendous kind of delicious taste. And, and again, it's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but it's got a nice herbal characteristic too. So it's, it is well balanced. Uh, if I were to go uh, on a star rating, I would definitely say that this is a, a four out of five stars to me. It does tend to be a teeny bit on the sweeter side, but when you, you take that well-balanced characteristics of, of the herbalness along with the peanuts and the, the red raspberry jelly, and you bring all of that together into this really affordable, this accessible, bourbon that's a tremendous buy stop sleeping on this one this this is one that you need to check out so up next tonight is old granddad 114 now this is one that does get overlooked when we did the uh, speakeasy tour in a video not too long ago some of y'all noticed that i had this on the floor so i've got bottles underneath the shelves i got the floor lined with bottles as well and and some of you noticed that it, this was on the floor and i did point out in those, those of you that commented on it that this isn't on the floor because it isn't quality it's on the floor because I just put it down there. I don't have a good excuse. But the, the point is, this is a very, very good bourbon. Again, Old Granddad coming at 114 proof. So you got a really nice mid-proof bourbon. So on the nose, I'm getting a really nice butterscotch, some proof, very faint herbalness, and a little bit of kind of a wood and a wood chart. Just very, very faint. 
So on the palate, it really starts out with just nice, this nice little pepper on the tip of your tongue. And then there's there's a good mouth coat. It goes to a, a little bit of a peanut, a little bit of an herbalness. The herbalness is actually fairly strong. It's got a really good finish. To me, this is an exceptional value because there are a lot of other bourbons that I have paid a lot more than this one that this delivers a lot more in value to me. 114 proof, great flavor profile. It's one that you definitely don't want to sleep on. Next up tonight is Rebel Distillers Collection. Now, this is a Virginia ABC uh, barrel select. Obviously, if you're not local to Virginia, you're not going to be able to get this particular barrel pick. The point, though, is the Rebel Distillers Collection, they do a lot of barrel picks with different stores, different state ABCs, wherever it is, Try to find one because they are exceptionally good values. This one's come in at 130 proof, selected by the Virginia ABC. It's a really, really solid pick. Now, again, these are weeded bourbons. So if you're looking to get into weeded bourbons, this is a really good place to start, especially if you tend to like middle proof stuff. Again, this is coming at 113 proof. Let's smell it. The predominant thing I'm getting on the nose from this is like a really like strong, rich honey, along with like some hay underneath that. And then below that is like this nice caramel note. And so it really, really comes across as just like a very pleasant day on the farm, out in the fields. I mean, it really kind of has that kind of smell to me. On the palate, there's just this explosion of character of sweet and peppery and some spice and a little bit of cinnamon. And all of those things kind of come together and it really kind of reminds me of like a... a uh, wild turkey rare breed but kind of muted so if you took wild turkey rare breed and just turn down the volume knobs just a little bit the different flavor knobs just a little bit you get that some of those weeded profile notes but it also you know carries a lot more personality in my opinion than a lot of other weeded bourbons for this value is is pretty exceptional and to me this is a four out of five star bourbon all day long regardless of price or value it's just good up next tonight is wilderness trail small batch bottled and bond now this hundred proof bourbon that wilderness trail is putting out is really kind of interesting because instead of using the traditional sour mash process that a lot of bourbon is made from most bourbon is made using sour mash they actually use a process called they call sweet mash it's, let's save a taste and we'll talk about it to me the nose on this is really really interesting because it's a fairly young bourbon but it comes across with this kind of almost like maltiness and you get this like corn, you get like a nice strong corn smell with some maltiness. And then this is really kind of underlying like syrupy sweetness. So it smells really interesting from the fact that it's a fairly young bourbon, but it doesn't smell very young, but it smells kind of unique and different. Really just kind of explodes with this nice, like a little bit of a pepperiness up front. And then it's got this really nice mouth coat, which you don't normally get from something this age. And then from there, it goes into this like really nice sweetness and then slowly fades. And the, the finish is, is solid as well. It's a great mouth coat, good finish, really nice bourbon experience from a fairly young bourbon. It is bottled in bond, so it's at least four years, but it's it doesn't taste like something that's just barely bottled in bond. I would probably give this three and a half out of five stars. It's a little more expensive than some of the other bourbons on this list, but it's still fairly accessible to find something Wilderness Trail, whether it's this one, a five year, a six year, a store pick, something right around in that age, Wilderness Trail, give it a shot. Next up tonight is Old Forester 1897 Bottled and Bond. Now this is a uh, obviously 100 proof bottled and bond whiskey. Uh, it's part of the Old Forester Whiskey Row, something that we need to not sleep on. It's because you're getting a very good product at 100 proof bottled and bond. Old Forester for a pretty good price tag, and it's really available in most places. Everybody is fixated on the 1910 and the 1920, and I totally get it because I love 1910 and I love the 1920, but this this is really, really good too, and it's a better price point than both of those, and in some places where you can't get the 1910s or the 1920s because they're sold out, you can still get the 1897s. Now just look at the beautiful color on this one. I just love the way this one looks. On the nose, this has this beautiful caramel with a hint of butterscotch. And then on top of that, there's like this nice red berry. And it's just it's just this nice berry sweetness on the nose. On the palate, there's just gobs of sweetness. There's vanilla, there's caramel, there's a hint of cinnamon. It reminds me almost a little bit of like a cinnamon roll. Just very, very rich and delicious. It's got a good, thick, viscous mouthfeel. It's got a strong, strong, strong finish. This taste to me, it drinks a lot proofier than 100 proof. It's not, this is, a, this is a bourbon that's full of character. And for this price point, again, to get a 100 proof 
quality bourbon that you can probably get most places to me this is a three and a half out of five stars and it's something that you should be able to find much more easy than many allocated balls as well as it's easier to find around here these days in the 1910 and the 1920. so next up tonight is knob creek nine single barrel reserve now if if you can't get this particular Knob Creek 9, any of the nine, Knob Creek 9 products, that's really what we're talking about here. This particular one, though, is 120 proof, single barrel, nine year age stated bourbon. Obviously, as a single barrel, your bottle may be different than mine, but whether, again, whether it's the single barrel reserve or it's just a standard Knob Creek 9, whatever it is, get the proof you want, get the one that you can find. On the nose, I'm obviously getting some proof with 120 proof, but I'm getting this like strong honey note with some peanut. And it really reminds me of like a peanut butter and honey sandwich. Wow, on the palate, this just explodes. That proof comes in. It's got this really nice mouth feel, really nice mouth coat. It has a really, really strong kind of honey and maple syrup to me. There's a little bit of a peanut on the palate. It's not super strong, but when you first take a sip, there's this really strong herbal note that goes straight to black pepper. And then it tones all that down and then goes right into this like nice, mellow sweetness it just it just slowly fades and the finish kind of goes to a little more herbal on the finish but it's not strong it's it's very pleasant so again for a nine-year bourbon this particular one's 120 proof at this price point but don't sleep on the knob creek nines the knob creek 12s you guys know that knob creek 12 is one of my favorite bourbons on the planet the knob creek nine its little brother is a step down yes but it's much more accessible the 12s are in many places, very, very hard to find. If you can get a store pick that that or a single barrel reserve, something along those lines, uh, those are just exceptional finds. So buy those all day long and definitely don't sleep on Knob Creek anymore. So last up tonight is 1792 Bottled and Bond. Now I did tell you that I wasn't gonna put anything limited or rare on this list, and this isn't necessarily that. Here in Virginia, it's actually pretty hard to find, but in other states where I've gone whiskey hunting and bourbon hunting, this has actually been on the shelf. So I'm gonna include it because most other places I've been, I can get it at retail, it's pretty easy to find. But if it's not in your world, don't hold it against me. The 1792 small batches is, is really just a small step down from this. So it's a good option, but the bottled and bond there is something special about it. I actually prefer the bottled and bond now to the foolproof 1792. This to me is the sweet spot in the 1792 universe to hit that just delicious balance of flavor and character. On the nose, I'm getting honey, some black pepper, a little bit of herbalness. I'm getting a little bit of a cherry, a little bit of a wood and a little bit of a hay. I mean, that's what I'm saying. This has, is there so much going on in this bottle? The first sip, it really is just this explosion of herbalness and pepper. And then it immediately starts to fade out. And then this beautiful, sweet, like butterscotch really just kind of stands up and takes center stage. And there's this delicious, thick, viscous mouth coat on this. And then it's got this delicious finish that, that, that goes and goes. This 1792 bottled and bond would easily be four to four and a half out of five stars. And when you figure in the value, then it easily falls closer to the four and a half side of that equation. So if you ever run across one of these and you have been sleeping on 1792 bottled and bond, by all means, rectify the situation. But with all that said, we are done. We have covered eight different bottles that you need to stop sleeping on. In this time where we're having strikes and shortages and bottle issues and delivery issues across the country, if you are looking for something to drink, see which one of these had a flavor profile or a description that kind of stood out to you in your mind and maybe pick one of them up and give them a shot. Thank you so much for watching the video tonight. Thank you especially to the Patreons for your continued support and for those who go out and buy our merchandise at whiskeyrow.shop. And until next time, find a bottle you love.